late Minister Carlton Ashby. We also want to thank our audio video team that's in place, uh, Andre, uh, Tim, Sister Lisa, and Brother Sean. Uh, thank our musicians that are here this morning, uh, Brother Brandon, Brother Woodrow, Brother Anthony. Thank God for them making ministry possible and happen. Real quick, before I dive into this, let me give a couple of quick announcements. Um, as you all know that Monday is uh, Memorial Day, um, and so I will not be live via Facebook on Memorial Day, um, and I will not be live for the prayer call that evening. Um, we will move the prayer call to Tuesday evening, and we will be back live on Facebook on Tuesday uh, morning. I'm going to take tomorrow and I'm going to rest. I um, also want to let you know there are a couple of different forms of social media that we are now available on. Uh, we are now available on Roku TV um, under an app called From the Pulpit Radio. From the Pulpit Radio, it's a purple and gold app um, from the Pulpit Radio on Roku TV. Um, we are also uh, on uh, the iOS, on the Apple Store Network under from the pulpit radio if you click on that app uh, you'll see the Bethany Baptist Church logo and just click on that there are on-demand videos of sermons as well as live uh, interactions whenever we go live uh, from uh, our sanctuary uh, the last one is on the fire stick fire stick um, you can also go to the Google Play Store and down download from the pulpit radio app it's a purple and gold app uh, and it's also on your fire stick. So now that you are able to watch us live and on demand uh, on your televisions, if you uh, did not have uh, the streaming on your phone, so you're not limited to holding it on your on your phone or um, looking at it on your tablet, you're able to look at us on, on your great big 92-inch uh, flat screen that you got in your living room. Amen. Um, and so we just want to encourage you. Those are some other forms of media um, that you can find us on. Um, as well. Please take the time to download those apps. They are absolutely free. They're absolutely free. Um, and we want to make sure that we are reaching the masses to the best of our ability. Um, and let me encourage um, some millennial, some uh, teenager, some, some, uh, someone in their 20s or their 30s, make sure that you check on the seniors. Um, help them uh, manipulate uh, their technology. Help them get it on their phones. Help them uh, get it on their, their televisions, help help them uh, process what needs to be processed, give them the assistance that they need, don't leave them in the dark. Um, for some of us, this is going to be a normality uh, for, for a little while. I know uh, your president has come on and stated that uh, he is mandating, get close up on me, Andre, he is mandating, uh, yeah, clear me up, son, clear me up, there you go. He's mandating churches uh, to be open. Um, the church has never been closed. Uh, we have closed the building, uh, but the church has been very active in the lives of believers um, because we as the body of Christ are the church. Um, when it is safe um, and it is uh, sane for us to come out and adjourn together, congregate together, uh, we will do so, uh, but we are not moving uh, until uh, we see some numbers go down. Uh, we're not moving until there are some vaccines in place for this virus, um, and so we are not in a hurry to congregate, which puts us at a higher risk. I'm, I'm not knocking whoever uh, is doing it. At the end of the day, I pastor one church. Uh, the Bethany Baptist Church, 2587 Campus Stella Road. Um, and as for me and my house, uh, we will be in the house. Uh, we'll be in the house uh, until uh, the Lord, the righteous judge, <laughs> gives us the affirmation and confirmation that everything is okay. Um, it is the shepherd's job to ensure uh, the safety of the sheep. Um, and as the under-shepherd of this house, I'm going to err on the side of caution. Um, considering that 60% of our congregation uh, is made up of seasoned saints from 60 and above. Um, 
so we want to make sure that the mothers of the church and the fathers of the church are still around to pass on that wisdom and legacy and there's no need to rush uh, the doors of the church are always open however uh, the building uh, is closed amen I can hear you saying amen at home amen um, meet me in Luke 8 we have been uh, dealing with mental health awareness um, all month, and now we are uh, coming to an end. Uh, next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, so we want to encourage you to wear your white and take your uh, selfies in your white, everybody. Pentecost white party. Amen. Let's dive into this text. Luke 8, 26 through uh, 39. I'm reading from the NIV version. My Bible reads like this. They sail to the region of the uh, Gerasene, uh, Ger excuse me, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus... He cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, though he had chained, though he was chained hand and foot, and kept under guard. He had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. <laughs> Jesus asked him, what is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. He gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside. And the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed in, in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. And all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away saying, Return home tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away, told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be unto God. I want to deal today, I want to talk today from a sermon entitled, uh, Dealing with My Demons. Dealing uh, with My Demons. We don't like to use the word demons uh, in church nowadays. It's a very frightening uh, subject. Um, and even when we are attempting to define uh, what demons are and what demons look like, um, it is a difficulty in us giving true descriptions. Um, but I would suggest that a demon is a spiritual connection that ties to you, that keeps you from being all that God is calling you to be. Um, demons in modern day society may not have you cutting yourself. Um, they may not have you rolling in the floor, but they may connect you to an addiction. Uh, they may connect you to some mental capacity or some issue. Uh, they may connect you to some person that you can't shake off or get rid of. Uh, they may have the capacity to devalue you and de devalue yourself and how you see yourself. Uh, all of us are dealing with some kind of demon. 
Uh, when I say demon, maybe, maybe I should rephrase the word demon and say issue. Uh, issue may be a better palatable word than demon. Uh, and the reality is there, are, there is a certain format if we ever want to be delivered from the demon, if we ever want to be delivered from the issue, if we ever want to be delivered from the addiction, that we have to go through the process. Uh, oftentimes we've become so comfortable in our issues, uh, comfortable with our demon, comfortable with the situations that we're struggling with in life that calls for us to and keep us from being all that God have called uh, us to be, that we forget to take the time to really look in a space and a place that we can be able uh, to grow into what God. We think that it's unreachable. We think it's unattainable because we've been dealing with it for so long. I want to help you this morning. I want to help you deal with those issues that have been buried, deal with those issues that have have been have been consuming you, deal with those issues uh, that, that have been on the back burner in your life, that have been there, but they have been debilitating you and keeping you from being all that God has called for you to be. Within this particular text, we see Jesus arriving in the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. Jesus and his disciples get in the boat and they head across the lake to uh, the, la the region of the Gerasenes. Now Jesus has fed the 5,000 and now they're in the boat and Jesus is asleep at the bottom of a boat. The storm breaks out and it tries to take Jesus out. The disciples get scared as the boat is filling up and they wake Jesus up and say, carest thou not if we perish? Jesus gets up out of his sleep, washes the coal out of his eyes and says, peace be still. The wind stopped blowing. The rain stops falling. The waves stop bashing. He looks at the disciples and says, oh, ye of little faith, did I not tell you we were going to the other side? That Jesus has a specific mission that he's attempting to accomplish by getting to the other side. That Jesus has a divine appointment with a demonic man that's living in a cemetery on the other side. Now, here's the good news, CJ. A lot of people have counted this man out. A lot of people, because of his demonic possession, issues that are in his life, have not given him the uh, attention that they need. Instead, they ostracize him and put him in a graveyard. They chain him up and keep him in isolation. But Jesus finds that this man is just as important as the 5,000 men that he just left feeding on the other side. Y'all ain't gonna help me. See, oftentimes, people that have issues feel that God has forgotten them. But I wanna let you know that God has not forgotten you even with your issues, even with your anxieties, even with your depressions, even with your low self-esteem, that you are still important to God. Look what Jesus does. Jesus faces wind and rain and storm and, and almost drowning because of a divine appointment with a, a demonic man. And I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I've got a sneaky suspicion suspicion that there is a, a divine appointment for you today so that you can be delivered from your issues. The Bible declares when Jesus steps on the shore, he was met by the demon-possessed man from the town. Look at this text. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. The text suggests to us that this man is not described Anthony by who he was but he's described by how he was and sometimes our issues can be so weighty, so meaty, so heavy that folks forget who we are because of how we are. Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning. The reality is is that you can never allow how you are to dictate 
gravitate to who you are. Uh, that's why it's important that we deal with our demons because if we don't, uh, people will forget who we are uh, because of how we are. They will forget uh, our name and what God has called us to be simply because of the way that we conduct ourselves. Uh, before we get, we never get CJ a uh, uh, name of this man. All we get is a description uh, of how the man behaves. Uh, we don't get uh, 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 Brandon, uh, his occupation. Uh, all we get is his attitude. We don't, we don't get to know him uh, if, if, if he has a family. All we understand is uh, his, how he conducts himself. Uh, and can I let you know that there are some people uh, that will already count you out simply because of how you conduct yourself. Uh, they'll never know the trauma that you felt. They'll never know the background uh, of your burden. They'll never know the tears that you've cried. They'll never know what you're really dealing with. All they'll do is look at you on the outside uh, and not really care about who you really are uh, on the inside. Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning. That's okay. I'll preach to my own self. And the reality is, Cason, uh, is that when Jesus steps on the shore, he's met by this demon-possessed man simply because uh, we understand that the demons uh, have not conquered the man that's on, in, that's on the inside of him. Uh, that there is still yet deliverance every time uh, Jesus shows up. Oh, that's good news. You ought to nudge your breakfast buddy right there and say there's good news in that. That every time Jesus shows up, that there is deliverance that is possible. Look at what happens between the interaction between the demon-possessed man and Jesus. The Bible says that when, when he saw Jesus, he began to cry out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, what do you want with me? Jesus, son of the most high God, I beg of you, don't torture me. Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man, and many times it had seized him. Let me pause and put that on rewind. If you notice, there is a singular context of impure spirit to come out of the man. And every time uh, that Jesus asked for the impure spirit to come uh, out of the man, the Bible says it would seize him uh, and, as, and though he was chained hand and foot uh, and kept under guard, he had broken his chains uh, and had been driven by the demon into a solitary place. Uh, oftentimes, we look at deliverance as a singular one day process, but I want to let you know that deliverance uh, is a daily process. Uh, deliverance is something something that happens every morning. That's why Paul says, I have to renew my mind each and every morning because deliverance is a process. It says that Jesus commanded the impure spirit, one spirit, to come out of the man and many times it had seized him. Every time the man tried to get free, the Bible says the spirit seized him. Every time the man tried to break loose, there was something that was pulling him back in. I came to let somebody to know today that you got to continue to fight for your deliverance. That deliverance ain't something that's simply going to fall in your lap. Deliverance ain't something that you can name and claim, tag and bag, lay hands on it and think you believe it and receive it. No, deliverance is a warfare between the demonic possession that's trying to pull you down and the Holy Spirit of God that's trying to pull you out uh, that there was a fight uh, and see because the people never took the time uh, to understand who the man was uh, all they did Andre was look at how he was uh, they never knew that he was fighting that he didn't really want to be this way who wants to be the one labeled uh, as the naked man living in the cemetery who who wants to be the one that's shackled and chained uh, who wants to be the one that's caught uh, with an arm uh, with an armed guard who wants to be the one labeled uh, as crazy. He didn't want to be this way. However, when you refuse to deal with demons, they get stronger as they go forward. When you choose to continue to throw dirt on top of your issues instead of dealing with them, when you refuse to grab it at the root and always just pull it off the leaf, you know the difference, don't you? When you pull it off the leaf, it means that it's no longer visible to the naked eye, but 
the root of the problem is still there. That just because people can see it doesn't mean that it's not there. Just because you can cover it up or pull it off doesn't mean that it's not something lying underneath the dirt in your life. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. And so Jesus, Jesus steps on the shore and begins to deal with the man not, not in how he is but who he is. Jesus calls out this impure spirit of the man and it seizes him but then Jesus gets to a place uh, that I want to help some of you all with Jesus asked the man a question uh, he says what is your uh, name well why would he take the time Woodrow to ask uh, a demon possessed man uh, what his name was let me help you right there uh, because in order to tame the demon uh, you got to be willing to name the demon uh, part of our issue in not being able to receive the deliverance uh, in our lives is that we don't want to be real uh, with ourselves and actually where we are. Uh, you don't want to say to yourself, uh, I have this. I'm dealing with uh, this. And until you uh, take an introspective look and look at some of the stuff uh, that you're struggling with, you can outwardly continue to, to portray and fake it till you make it uh, all you want to. But at the end of the day, uh, sooner or later, if you want to be delivered, uh, you're going to have to name what it is uh, that you struggling with. Y'all ain't going to help me preach, Patrick Kaysen. Uh, and the reality is when Jesus steps on the scene, uh, he doesn't continue to go back and forth uh, with the demons. He says, what is uh, your uh, name? Listen, we're reminded somewhere else uh, where God begins to perform transformation uh, in Genesis when he's dealing uh, with uh, Jacob. He asks Jacob as he's wrestling uh, with the angel, the angel is getting ready to bless Jacob uh, and before he leaves he asks Jacob this question uh, what is your name and Jacob takes an introspective look at all and how he was uh, instead of looking at who he was uh, and can I let you know this morning uh, that before God changes how you are he'll change who you are uh, y'all ain't gonna help me in here see a lot of us are looking for an outward transformation uh, but we're not gonna see a change on the outside uh, until there's a transformation on the inside. God wants you to, God wants to know who you are before he identifies with how you are. Why do you say that, Kaysen? Because if God can change who you are, he can change how you are. If he can change how you see yourself, he'll change how other people see you. If he can change the internal issues, he'll make an external display of you. I want to let you know today, Jesus wants wants to know what is your name uh, meaning how do you see yourself uh, what are you struggling with uh, are you willing to identify it for yourself see here's the funny thing everybody else knows what you're struggling with uh, everybody else externally can see your issues uh, everybody else can see your slip hanging uh, but until you take the time uh, to identify it for yourself until you uh, name the demon uh, you can't expect to tame the demon Here's his response, Brandon. He says, Legion, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus <laughs> repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. The Bible says that demons wanted to go into a herd of pigs that were feeding on the hillside. And Jesus granted their request. They didn't want to be cast into the sea. So they asked to go into the pigs. Let me say this. In order for a demon to stay, it's got to have a willing host. It's got to have somewhere to go. That's why the Bible tells us to cast our cares on him. Because he cares for us. Let, let, me, let, me, let me help somebody real quick. I'm, I'm, I promise you I'm almost done. Um, 
You ever met somebody that always had an issue? Always had some stuff going on? Ain't never at peace, but always dealing with something crazy in their life. They'll come to church and they'll shout and they'll give God glory, but they always stir in the pot with something going on. Part of the reason that is, Brandon, is not that they have, they haven't been delivered when they came to the altar. But part of the, the issue, Andre, is that they go back and they continue to be a willing host. I knew I won't go hear y'all say amen on that. <laughs> um, when you decide that you really want to be delivered, it means that I'm now closing the door on being a willing host to these things that have been pulling me down and keeping me from being all that God has called for me to be. So the demons have to have somewhere to go when they're cast out. They got to have a willing host. Um, that's why you got to be careful uh, of listening to everybody's issues because you will become a willing host to their issues. Uh, that's why you ain't, you are not, let me say this, because I'm not. I am not, I'll say I'm not. I am not certified to deal with everybody's problems uh, because I don't want to take on the responsibility of being a willing host to everybody's stuff. Um, there's some stuff that only Jesus can fix and deal with. And the text says that, <laughs> CJ, the, the the demons thought that they would outsmart Jesus. Don't send us into the abyss. Uh, send us into the pigs. Uh, so, so they sent them, Jesus sends them into the pigs. And the Bible says that instead of the demons going into the abyss, they go into the pigs, but then the pigs go into the sea and drown. I want to let you know that when Jesus fixes it for you, the demons can make all the requests that they want, but at the end of the day, God has the final say. And if he says the demons are going into the abyss, they're going into the abyss. Because whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Now see this. If they would have gone into the pigs, they would have had the opportunity to go into the people that were farming the pigs, that were feeding the pigs, which meant they had another willing host. But because Jesus sent them into the pigs and then the pigs went crazy, and the pigs went into the went into the sea it shows that they're now no longer a demon that the man has to deal with and let me put a penny in the meter right there in the same amount of demons that were in the man that was causing him to go crazy but not kill himself are the same amount of demons that go into the pigs that cause the pigs to lose their mind and drown themselves I want to let you know that even though you're dealing with issues you are so much stronger than you think uh, even though you got some stuff with you uh, y'all ain't gonna help me uh, you're stronger than you think uh, that some of the stuff that you're dealing with uh, would have killed an average person uh, but look at the grace of God uh, even keeping you in your craziness uh, y'all ain't gonna help me this morning uh, and the reality is uh, all you're waiting for uh, is Jesus to come through uh, and sweep clean hold, hold on hold on hold on hold on Y'all stop, y'all stop, y'all stop. Bible says <laughs> that those that were taking care of the pigs saw what happened uh, and they ran off to report to the town and the people went out to see what happened. Now, now, now you gotta take into consideration, Tim, Who's controlling the narrative? You got to remember, Sean, who's telling the story. Uh, so the pig farmers who have now lost all of their profit because their profit has now gone and drowned into the sea go back and report to the people in the town what they saw. You got to think that the narrative has to be jaded because of the loss of the pig farmers. And at the end of the day, they were never concerned with the demon-possessed man. They were concerned with how he was 
versus who he was. Their concern was the prophet of the pig. Which leads us to a very familiar space and place that we're in right now. Where the country is being opened back up because of the prophet of the pig. Where the, the yet to be United States is more concerned about profit with an F instead of profit with a PH. You got to remember as you're watching the news, who is controlling the narrative? Who's controlling what you see? Who's controlling how you see it? You have to take the time to remember that those that are controlling the narrative are more concerned with their well-being than your well-being. I'm in the text. I promise you it's right here. Text says that those tending to sheep, those tending to pigs saw what happened. They ran off, reported this in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. Well, by the time they showed up to see what had happened, all they saw was floating pigs. Right? And when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Wait a minute. You weren't afraid of him when he was naked in the cemetery, cutting on himself, breaking chains and fetters. You weren't concerned with him when he was interrupting your grandmama's funeral. You weren't concerned with him when he was hollering and screaming at the top of his voice, keeping you up all night. But now that he's sitting there at Jesus' feet, clothed and in his right mind, you're afraid. What are you really afraid of? Can I tell you what they're afraid of? They're afraid of the potential of what you could become if you ever got delivered from what's possessing you. Everybody is not going to be excited about your deliverance. All the people, uh, those that seen it, told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Let me say it again because some of y'all will miss it. Those of them who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. They, they, they told them the process of deliverance. <laughs> and let me tell you that deliverance is not a pretty process. Breaking chains in, on your life is not a pretty process. Deliverance uh, of addiction is not a pretty process. Getting into the space and place that God has called you to be is not a pretty process. And so as they told them the process from their narrative, they had to bring in the part, CJ, about the pigs. Uh, it says that they were overcome with fear. So Jesus got in the boat and left out. He left. Not that there uh, wasn't more work to do, but he left because the people were afraid. How could you be afraid of Jesus? Like, how could you be afraid of, of what what Jesus could do. Like you, you're sitting there looking at a man who was demon possessed. You know how he was before he met Jesus. How could you be afraid? Well, easy. It's easy to be afraid when your concern is more for profit than it is for people. It's easy to be afraid one, the thing that you have always manipulated can no longer be controlled. People fear what they don't understand. It's easy to be afraid when you're not thinking about the well-being of others. You're only concerned about yourself. The Bible declares that the man from whom the demons had gone out Beg to go with Jesus. But Jesus sent him away saying, return home and tell how much God has done for you. 
So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus had done for him. The demon-possessed man, after dealing with his demons, turns into a traveling evangelist. Well, I came to let somebody know today that Jesus still has the power to deal with your demons. Jesus still can deal with the issues that are concerning and consuming you. That Jesus still has the power in the palm of his hands. And I came to let somebody know today that if you give it to Jesus, he will do what no other power can do. That if you give it to Jesus, he can take your demons and cast them out. If you give it to Jesus, he'll give you a test and a testimony that everybody around you will look around and say, how could it be? I remember how you were. I remember what you used to do. I remember how you used to act. I remember where you used to go. I remember how you used to carry yourself. But you can tell them, I met a man by the name of Jesus. I met a man when I was dealing with my issues. I met a man when I was going through tests and trials and tribulations. I met a man and when I met this man named Jesus, he cured me of all of my issues. He cured me of all of my diseases. He cured me of everything that I was going through through I came to let somebody know not to be afraid of dealing with your demons don't be afraid of what you've been carrying because what you've been carrying will make you the perfect person to tell the world what God can do and the good news is what God has done for others he'll do the same for you is there any Anybody in here that can tell their story about how God dealt with you and your demons? I would say, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to you, you with the anxiety. I'm talking to you, you with the depression. I'm talking to you, you with the low self esteem. I'm talking to you, you with the lack of father figure. I'm talking to you, you that's been beaten and battered, you that's been broken hearted. I'm talking to you, you that's been cast off and you that's been cast away. I'm talking to you, you that's dealing with an identity crisis, you that's struggling in your sexuality. I'm talking to you, you that's dealing with some addiction issues, you that's dealing with being left out, you that's dealing with the struggles of life, that Jesus can and he will deal with your demons. I'm talking to you to let you know that greater is he that's within me than he that's within the world. I'm talking to you to let you know that Jesus can and he will. Is there anybody here that knows that Jesus can and he will do the exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask your thing there's my key I came to let somebody know that God will work it out just for you won't he do it won't he do it won't he fight your battles won't he bring deliverance to your house won't he cast out your demons won't he calm your fears won't he make your mind new won't he fix your heart won't he regulate your thoughts won't he mend up the broken pieces and if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side 
I still be struggling with my demons. If it had not been for a man named Jesus, I'd still be caught up in my corruption. But one day, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very stainly, deep within, sinking to rise no more. But as I was sinking, Jesus was stepping on the shore and he changed my name, gave me a new walk, gave me a new talk, but I was willing to deal with my demons. I was willing to call out what had been pulling me down. I was willing to lay hold of what had been holding me back and win. I said win. I gave it to Jesus. The old things were passed away and behold all things were new. Good morning y'all. May the Lord God bless you. Real, real good. But I stopped by here on my way to heaven just to encourage your heart to let you know that when you deal with your demons, your deliverance will become daily. When you deal with your deliverance, with your demons, God will, I said God will deliver you. Is there anybody here that thinks about how good God's been to them? When I look back to where he brought me from, when I see the mountains he's moved, when I see the ways he's made, when I see the doors he's opened, I gotta give him glory, I gotta give him praise. Don't look at who I am, but look at my testimony. My testimony is not in who I am today, but my testimony is how I used to be. I've come a mighty long way since the Lord delivered me. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody that would like to testify that when I was what I was, you didn't want to deal with me. You didn't think about me. You didn't care about me. But when I met Jesus, he made me brand new. He cleaned me on the inside out. He didn't just change who I was, but he changed how I am. And I am a child now of the Most High God. I am what God says I am. I can't be concerned with your fears now since you can't control me. But I am what the Lord made me to be. You ought to hug on your own self and say, Self, you is what God says you is. I know it ain't good English, but it's good preaching. I miss what God says I miss. And take no demon, take no devil, Take nobody change what God has made me to be. You ought to tell the Lord, thank you for looking beyond how I was and making me who I am. What is your name? What's your name? What is it this morning 
that you need to name so that you can get your deliverance. In order to tame the demon, you must be willing to name the demon. I know it's hard. I know you don't, you don't want to deal with it. You don't want to name it. Could be abandonment issues. Could be lack of a mother figure. Could be lack of a father figure. It could just be you feeling like you're insignificant. What is it? See, we can't go forward into deliverance until we deal with it. But here's the good news. There's always good news. The good news is you don't have to deal with it alone. Jesus is right there. And listen. Listen, listen. Let's watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. Deliverance comes to the demon-possessed man simply because he names it. That's all he did. Jesus did the casting. Jesus did, did the deliverance. So when are you going to name it? When are you going to name it? So that you can get free. And I'm not talking about the leaf. So, so let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me help Woodrow. Um, getting high is the leaf. Being molested as a child is the, is the root. Alcoholism is the leaf. Low self-esteem is the root. Promiscuity is the leaf. Lack of a father figure is the root. Here's why we can't get free. We deal with the leaf. And can I let you know, as long as you cut the leaf down and the root is still there, eventually, because the root is there, the leaf gonna grow back. It may be a different color. It may be a different fragrance. It may be a different thing, but it's going to grow back. I need you to take the time to name it today. I need you to name it today. Don't leave this moment. Don't leave this moment without taking the time and dig deep, dig deep. It was in the third grade and missing such and such class when I felt like da da da. And it may seem insignificant to everybody else, but I want to let you know that it's significant to your deliverance. It's not until you name it that you can be delivered from it. Let's pray. Father, today we cast those things upon you that have been consuming us. Help us peel back this onion so that we can get to the root of how we are and why we are so that you can change who we are. We want to be made into your image. There's certain things, God, that we've yet to deal with that have been haunting us. So today, Father, we, we name it. We name that issue, that concern, that experience that we've been covering up, we've been covering over, we haven't wanted to deal with. Today, God, we deal with it. We cast it on you. We name it so that you can tame it, so that you can change who we are. That we needed this moment so that we could cry out unto you. 
that you could pour in, God, and fill up the voided and the broken spaces that we would be made whole. God, we pray for those that are not saved today. They will believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. Forgive us of being sinners, God, and we believe in your son, Jesus. We ask him to come into our hearts and come into our lives right now. For those that are in backslidden states, we ask, oh God, that you would restore unto them the joy of their salvation. Allow them to get back on the path today. And for those that are without a church home, God, I ask that you would send them where they could be fed, be restored, and be replenished. Now, God, we thank you for this time of sharing. Seal it in. In Jesus' name. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make the Lord's face, the Lord's countenance to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Peace that you no longer worry or be weary. Peace that you may rest through the night. May the blessed God of peace, Jehovah Salaam, grant you God's peace. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for sharing and worship with us this morning. We pray that something was said or done to help you along life's journey. Now, if you would, please stay tuned for a brief announcement to follow the broadcast. Have a great day and we'll see you in the morning. We pray that this worship experience has blessed you. And we want to take the time to thank you in advance for your continued support of the Bethany Baptist Church. There are several ways that you can continue to support us as we do God's work and God's will, God's way. Uh, the first way that you can support us is electronically via Givelify. Just go to your app store and download the Givelify app and look for this particular house of worship and you can give that way. The second way is that you can mail your gifts in. You can mail them right here to the church, 2587 Campostella Road, Chesapeake, Virginia, 23324. Last but not least, that we do have some drop-off times here at the church that the church office will continue to be open to you. Uh, every Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., as well as from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., as well as Sundays, while we're shooting our virtual worship from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thank you once again for your continued support. We would not be able to do this without your help. God bless you and heaven smile upon you.